he does. So what I have so far is my, once again, a little bit crudely made, but it'll work just fine. Um, this beginning of my hearth zone, it'll look kind of like this. And it'll have an inverted cone inside of here, like that, an inverted cone inside of there that will be 5.25 inches tall. And that will be where the um, actual combustion takes place. There will be a little air nozzle that comes off the side right here, points down into there, and the air gets blasted right on top of the wood that will be in a cone inside of here, an inverted cone. The rest of this area around here will be just full of... This, what I bought today, plaster of Paris mixed with sand. Um, I'll put, mix it with water and then I'll let it cure for a few days. And then all you'll see up here is the top of a cone going down into a tube like this at the bottom. It's not going to be this exact piece of metal because it's a little bit too thin in my opinion, but it'll look kind of like that on the bottom. And that will be my reduction zone where, the, where it'll be, uh, the tar will get cracked and the gas will get clean from the biochar that will be in there. Um, so I've cut out my, also the only other thing I've done is cut out my template, or not my template, cut from a template a piece of sheet metal to turn into the cone that's going to sit inside of there. So if you want a better video on this, like I said, check out Flash's Flashifier, as he calls it, because it's kind of a hybrid invert gasifier. And I um, guess uh, keep watching mine because it's going to be a little bit different than his in some ways, but it's going to be pretty close. I'm going to use some different materials. Maybe those tanks will get involved. and uh, But build it very, very, very closely following his design. So with that said, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Hopefully I can push out a good gas fire in a couple weeks. Thank you very much. Alright guys, so I'm going to completely finish building the heart of the gasifier. Um, I have my reduction cone hearth area right here with the tabs welded to it as anchors for when I pour in my mixture of plaster of Paris and all-purpose sand. Um, that way it'll kind of anchor it down in there. I'm going to mix those together i'm going to do three peanut butter jars of sand which should be a little under six cups of sand and two peanut butter jars of plaster of paris so a little bit under four cups of plaster of paris making it a approximately 40 to 60 percent um, mixture mix it together with water till it's kind of like a putty and then pack it in here and then i'm going to pack it up i'm going to pack it up here so that it's to the top of this rim. I'm going to pack the inside of this rim. Um, I can over pack it and I'm going to sit on top of each other just like that and get this all, make sure this is all centered and everything as I'm, as I'm going along. Uh, set them on top of each other uh, and just make sure every single space in there is packed with putty. Uh, or not putty, packed with the plaster and sand. And then I'm going to let it sit and harden. And well, then I'm probably going to do a couple tack welds around the edge of this. And then I'm going to let it sit and harden. And then boom, I'll have the inside of my gasifier completely done. The main important part of my gasifier done. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up my mixture. 40% plaster of Paris, 60% sand. Mix it with water and I'm going to go ahead and pack it in there and get back to you when I'm when I have it curing. All right, thanks for watching. Just as a little, little side note, I'd like to show you what I did for the bottom cone um, or for the bottom reduction zone. I have three bolts welded through here sticking downwards where I put this piece of metal, which I originally said I wasn't going to use, but I'll use it for a test piece because I can easily replace it just by taking off these nuts and then if this burns out really quickly I can always replace it and I really don't think this is the right perfect size I want anyway as you can see so I don't think it's gonna work great but it'll be good enough to test it with um, 
Just wanted to show you how I did that. Weld those bolts in there so they would never come loose. The plaster should also help as like to surround those bolts and make sure they don't, they can't turn. Um, and that's about it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get to mixing. All right, guys, so as you can see, I have my combustion area and reduction zone pretty much completed. This is called the hearth zone and reduction zone in the FEMA handbook. What I did was I mixed up my plaster. I mixed in total eight cups of plaster and 12 cups of sand with approximately four cups of water in my cat's old uh, retired litter bowl. So of course I wore gloves and I did that. Uh, I don't know why I'm touching it right now actually. Um, so I did that yesterday in the morning. So about 24 hours ago and I packed, I took my putty like plaster mixture and packed the bottom part of this full had my cone sitting inside of there packed it all full of the plaster and then I, this was off at that time this top part of the rim was off at that time um upside down packed that full of plaster and then squished them together so there was plaster coming out of all these seams out of this hole right here and out of the edge right here and really squished it in there so that i know there was no um air pockets left in here to explode or whatever under the approximately 2,000 degrees that will, uh, 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit that it will get in here. So what else do I have to say about this? I guess the only thing left to do on this is to where these two parts of the rim meet up, run some small beads around here in order to keep it nice and sturdy when I have it on my, when I have this part welded to my hopper. Um, I'm going to do that once this actually sets up. It's about 50 degrees in this garage, and I can kind of feel the moisture still in this plaster. So I'm going to bring it inside where it's warmer and let it cure for about three or four days before I actually get to really weld on here. So, uh, But it's something i got to do. Um, what else? I'll give you a quick look over of this. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll give you some measurements. Um, so bear with me for a second. The top of my combustion area, also known as the hearth zone in the FEMA handbook, is about 5.25 inches across and about five and a half inches tall. I think it's actually 5.25 inches tall as well. And then the total length all the way to the bottom my reduction zone is about eight and a half inches tall um and that bottom hole down there is two inches which is i guess this is pretty much this is pretty much proper size for a 10 to 15 horsepower engine which is what i'm trying to run uh, which is what i'm trying to run so with all that said i'm going to go over here and talk a little about safety uh, I know it's not the most interesting thing, but it needs to be said so that I don't get sued, I guess. Um, and because something happened yesterday that I'll talk about. So I was cutting, this is my hopper, going to be my hopper. It's an old water uh, heater tank, I believe. And as you can see, I cut the six inch circle around the edge to weld to the top of my combustion area that I just showed you. Uh, I was cutting it out with my, uh, with my angle grinder with a cutoff blade. This is a grinding blade on there now. And I was holding the tank close to my body, trying to stabilize it, grinding, cutting around the top rim with the grinder. And I got a little bit too close to my sweatshirt, as you can see. And the grinder grabbed my sweatshirt, um, or the cutting blade grabbed my sweatshirt, ripped the grinder out of my hand, and started spinning around on my stomach, basically, just ripping my shirt wide open through two layers, because this is the pocket. Two layers of my sweatshirt. And uh, it didn't touch my T-shirt underneath, didn't uh, get my stomach, luckily. If I wasn't wearing a sweatshirt, I definitely would have got a pretty bad injury. And it stopped only when it pulled the plug out of the wall, uh, which I, I'm pretty lucky for that I was far enough away for it to pl pull it out of the wall. So that's just a reminder, whenever you're using uh, something with a lot of torque, such as the grinder, uh, just make sure you know, you're aware of where, how close you are to it. And if you're wearing anything baggy, 
or anything that's like unzipped sweatshirts are bad. They'll get sucked right into the grinder and pull your face into there. So not just, just be aware, just be aware of that danger. Another danger you need to be aware of is when you're cutting into propane tanks, LP tanks, acetylene tanks, things like that, things that have explosive gases in them, oxygen tanks. Um, before you ever cut into an oxygen tank, an LP tank, propane tank, whatever, you need to make sure it's completely emptied. So somehow find a way to empty the tanks if they're old style and you can just turn the valve open and make sure it's, and just let it, the air or let the gases come out. And then uh, after that, fill them completely with water, all the way to the top with water before you ever cut a hole in it, uh, drill into it, weld on it, whatever you want to do. That way you don't have an explosion, fire, injury, and death. Um, just saying that, so hopefully you don't sue me. So I'm not a safety Sally, but you gotta, that, I mean, that's a pretty important safety measure you need to take. You can't just go welding on a propane tank or welding, especially like on an acetylene tank. You can't just go cutting into an acetylene tank because it, it will explode when you get through there, when you get through the metal. So I guess um, that's about all I want to talk about in this video. In my next video, I should probably have the hopper done and welding it to the top and probably be working on the gas input, which will come in about right here and blow down on top of the biomass that I have in there to create the fire and the heat and everything I need to crack the tar. So stay tuned for that. Comment, rate, subscribe. Um, and thanks for watching.